Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this truss using flexibility matrix method. We need to find the degree of static indeterminacy. This is the formula to find that. For DSI, this is the formula. Here the members are 10 and the joints are 6. For DSI, we will get to 1. For DSE, this is the formula. There are 3 reactions to be found out. At A, we have hinged support. So, 2 reactions we need to find. At D, there is a roller support. So, 1 reaction should be found. So, R is 3. Sumal R is 3. Available equilibrium conditions. We know that there are 3 equilibrium conditions. So, small R also will be 3. For DSE, we will get 0. So, the degree of static indeterminacy will be 1. That is only internal static indeterminacy. Out of these 10 members, we need to remove one member. You can see that finding the forces in these two members will be very difficult. So, for our own convenience, out of these two, we can remove any one. I am going to release BE. You can see that I have removed BE. This structure is called released structure. Let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate that is FBE because we have released that. Let us keep the force in BE as a tensile. If we get negative value later, we can change the direction. This is the formula we are going to use to find FBE. In this analysis, there is only one coordinate. So inside all of these four matrices, there will be only one member. In this address, there is no external deflection. So delta will be zero. Since there is only one member inside these matrices, we can take the members out of the matrix. P1 is FBE because that's what we have removed. Delta inverse will be 1 upon delta. So we have simplified the formula to find FBE. Now we have to make this a table. P is the member forces in the released structure. We have released BE. We can find the member force in BE. So we can directly apply 0 for BE. The rest of them we need to find now. Let us find. Before finding the member forces, we have to find the reactions. At A, we need to find two reactions. And at D, we need to find one reaction. To find VA, I am going to take moment about D. In this case, we have to follow right hand side rule. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. VA is acting in the clockwise direction, so it will be positive and the distance is 5 plus 5 plus 5 so it will be 15 15 VA this load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it will be negative and the distance is 10 this load is also acting in the anticlockwise direction so it is also negative and the distance is 5 this horizontal load is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is 4. For VA, we will get 12 kN. Let us apply this rule and find VD. VA and VD are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. These two loads are acting downwards, so both of them are negative. For VD, we will get 16 kN. Using this rule, we can find HA. HA is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. This load is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. For HA, we will get 10 kN. Now, we need to find the member forces. Before that, we need to find the angles. Let us take this triangle. In this triangle, let us find the angle theta. 10 theta is opposite side by adjacent side. The opposite side is 4 meter. And the adjacent side is 5 meter. So it will be 4 upon 5. So theta will be 38.66. If this angle is 38.66, this angle and this angle also should be 38.66. First I am going to take joint D and to find the member forces. 
I am going to use the method of joints to find the member forces. Similar kind of statically determinate structure I have already analyzed. This is in the description. You can see that for getting more idea in method of joints. Also, I am going to use only cos theta. If you wanted to use sin theta as well, you can do that. 90 minus 38.66, we will get this angle. 51.34. In the joint D, first we have to use this rule because there will be only one unknown. This is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FDE is inclined. We have to resolve it in the vertical direction. To make it vertical, we need 51.34 degree. So with the FDE, we have to multiply cos 51.34. It is acting upwards, so it will be positive. For FDE, we will get minus 25.61. Let us apply this rule and find FCD. FCD is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. FDE is inclined. We have to resolve that in the horizontal direction. To make it horizontal, we need 38.66 degree. So with the FDE, we have to multiply cos 38.66. It will be acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. Just before we have found FDE, we can apply that. Negative into negative, it will become positive. For FCD, we will get 20 kN. Now, we are going to take the joint E and to find the member forces. If this angle is 38.66, this angle also should be 38.66. And this angle will be 90 minus 38.66. It will be 51.34. First, we have to use this rule because there will be only one unknown. This is acting downwards, so it will be negative. FDE is inclined. We have to make it vertical. To make it vertical, we need this angle. So, with FDE, we have to multiply cos 51.34. Since it is acting downwards, it will be negative. We can apply the value of FDE. Already here, there is negative and this is also negative. So, negative into negative, it will become positive. FCE is acting downwards, so it will be negative. For FCE, we will get a 4. Then we have to apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. We have to make FDE horizontal. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So we have to multiply cos 38.66 with the FDE. It will be acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FDE is a negative 25.61. We can apply that. For FEF, we will get minus 20. Now, let us take the joint C. If this angle is 38.66, this angle will be 90 minus 38.66. It will be 51.34. First, we have to apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. FCF is inclined. We have to resolve it in the vertical direction. To keep it vertical, we need this angle. So with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 51.34. Since it is acting upwards, so it will be positive. FCE is acting upwards, so it will be positive. Just before we have calculated FCE, we can apply that. For FCF, we will get this. Now let us apply this rule. FCD is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. FBC is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. FCF is inclined. We have to resolve that in the horizontal direction. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 38.66. Since it is acting towards the left side, it will be negative. We can apply the value of FCF. Here already there is negative. So negative into negative, it will become positive. And let us apply the value of FCD. For FBC, we will get 25 kN. Now, let us take the joint B. In the vertical direction, we have only one member, FBF. So, that will be 0. Let us apply this rule. This is acting towards the left side, so it will be negative. And this is acting towards the right side, so it will be positive. For FAB, we will get 25. Now, we are going to take the joint A. FAB we have already found, we have to only find FAF. Using this rule, we can find that. This is acting upwards, so it will be positive. 
f i f is inclined we have to resolve that in the vertical direction to keep it vertical we need 51.34 degree so we have to multiply f i f with the cos 51.34 since it is acting upwards it will be positive for f i f we will get minus 19.21 let us enter all of the values of P. Now we are going to find the values of K. Let us see how we have to remove all of the loads and apply unit force in the direction of FBE. And then we need to find the member forces. You can see that I have removed all of the loads and I have applied unit force in the direction of FBE. We need to find these three reactions. You can see that in this stress there is only internal force, there is no external load. If there is no load, these three reactions will be zero. Ba, HA and Vd will be zero. We can remove the reactions. Here I have removed. Now we are going to find the member forces. AF, AB, ED and DC are the zero member forces. If you do not know how to find the zero force members, I have made a video regarding that. Video link is in the description. You can click the link and watch the video. It will be very helpful for you to find the zero force members and how to find the member forces with the shortcuts. If you cannot find the zero force members using the shortcuts, let us take the joint D and see how the member forces will become zero. When we use this rule, FDE will be zero and when we use this rule, FCD will be zero. But if you know the shortcuts, no need to do this. Directly we can apply zero. Now let us take the joint E and find the member forces. ED is the zero force member, so no need to take that. First we have to apply this rule. The unit force is inclined. We have to resolve it in the vertical direction. To keep it vertical, we need this angle. So with the unit to force, we have to multiply cos 51.34. It will be acting downwards, so it will be negative. FCE is acting downwards, so it is also negative. For FCE, we will get minus 0 0.625. Let us apply this rule. Unit force is inclined, we have to resolve it in the horizontal direction. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So with the unit force, we have to multiply cos 38.66. Since it is acting towards the left side, it will be negative. FEF is also acting towards the left side, so it is also negative. For FEF, we will get this. We have found the member forces in CE and FE. To find the other member forces, we can apply shortcut. You can see that it is symmetrical. So the force in BE will be equal to the force in FC. So it should be 1. The force in FE will be equal to the force in BC. And the force in EC should be equal to the force in FB. Even though there is a shortcut, still I am going to find the member forces using the method of joints. Let us take the joint C and find the member forces. Let us apply this rule. FCF is inclined. We need to make it vertical. To keep it vertical, we need 51.34 degree. So with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 51.34. Since it is acting upwards, it will be positive. FCE is acting upwards, so it is also positive. In the previous step, we have calculated FCE. We can apply that. For FCF, we will get 1. Now, let us apply this rule. We have to resolve FCF in the horizontal direction. To keep it horizontal, we need this angle. So, with the FCF, we have to multiply cos 38.66. Since it is acting towards the left side, it will be negative. FBC is acting towards the left side, so it is also negative. Just before we have found FCF1, we can apply that. For FBC, we will get minus 0 0.781. Now, let us take the joint B. In the previous step, we have calculated FBC. We have to only find FBF. For that, we need to apply this rule. We have to resolve the unit force in the vertical direction. 
to keep it vertical we need this angle so we have to multiply the unit force with the cos 51.34 since it is acting upwards it will be positive fbf is acting upwards so it is also positive for fbf we will get minus 0 0.625 now let us enter the values of k for be we have unit force the rest of them let us enter we have to find length of the members length of a b b c c d and f e is 5 length of f b and e c is 4 we can use the pythagoras theorem and to find the lengths of a f f c b e and e d that will be root of 5 square plus 4 square we will get 6.403 then we need to find PKL and K2 square L. Then we have to add all of the values of PKL. We will get this. And then we need to add all of the values of K square L. We will get this. To find delta L, this is the formula. And to find delta, this is the formula. In this one, we can apply these two. No need to apply AE because it will be eliminated. For FBE, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. FBE is a tensile. Then using this formula, we can find all of the member forces. Here I have entered all of the member forces in the truss. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.